Hi, I'm Johnny Lockjaw. Today, the devs for the Forever Winner released a second set of Q&A responses on their Discord server. Let's talk about it. This set of questions wasn't answered through a video. Apparently, the devs are working really hard to make sure that the early access release is, you know, good. They answered more questions this time around than they did previously. So I'm going to break down the questions into different categories and talk about them together collectively. With that being said, let's go over some gameplay stuff. So the devs added some context for how the end game is going to play out. So obviously this is going to be an early access title for the foreseeable future. So there's going to continuously be improvements on things. Currently, it sounds like the plan is going to be more geared towards the character experience and how each character is going to level up differently. They also added that there's going to be more enemy variety in the near future and in the long term future that they have a bunch of models for that they haven't optimized properly. So that should be something to consider. So for now, specifically, it sounds like the plan is going to be progression of the characters and their skills and the various customizations between them. And the upkeep with the innards remains a long term, like kind of all the time goal. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. They also added that the max party size from party to party is four players. So the game naturally responds to the number of players that you have. So going solo does make it easier to be stealthy, which makes sense. It's more difficult to travel quietly in a combat zone with more people so that is fine so the uh, the equalization that they provided is that more players equal more firearms and eyes but also a bigger target and perceived threat depending on what that team does and how well coordinated they are you know if a small fire team shows up into a war zone to try to get in and get out and collectively collect a bunch of stuff i would imagine some larger military powers would recognize that and send some people over there we talked a little bit about this in the last video, and if you didn't see that, I will link it in the description. But somebody wanted clarification on not being the guy and coming in juice to the teeth with the biggest weapons that you have and a bunch of ammo. They clarified that the game is going to retroactively respond to those things, and that obviously going in fully kitted out is harder because heavier enemies arrive sooner. If you show up and you start taking people out, they're going to start sending more people at you, and bigger enemies your threat level is going to be higher it's the same thing that they said before too so I, I like i said in the last video too it's basically like any other extraction shooter depending on the goals that you want to achieve you will probably need to pick and choose when to come out but geared super heavily which is how these games play so that's actually a really good thing plus it's really nice to see that they're making it possible to play stealthily and they're clarifying that when you come out you know juice to the teeth you're gonna draw more aggro and fire and eyes and people are gonna try to stop you from doing that. It really goes into the hardcore aspects they're trying to make this game be. Again, on squad composition, each player is gonna have a different threat level depending on the gear that they have. So it's very similar to Army of Two where somebody with a big gun is gonna draw way more aggro than somebody who has this smaller gun, which if, you know, team comp stuff if you want to have somebody that runs a large gun and then somebody that just sneaks around the enemies while the other people fight the guy with the big gun you can do that they also added some clarification that there is no gated content what you see is what you get everything is available from the jump the only technical gating that exists which really isn't the case is things that you unlock through xp and the different progression systems like adding more water to your innards gives you more traders so it allows you access to more things getting higher rep with the different factions allows you to buy different guns and attachments for the specific guns that they sell xp for the weapons is what allows you to buy it to more attachments for these guns and then xp character progression allows you to unlock the different skills on top of allows you to upgrade the specific perks that allow you to use better stuff and gives you the buffs essentially technically the only thing that they're gating is access to taking out the heavier enemies but really that just comes down to having that specific equipment more so than that's than they're preventing you from being able to actually use it so with that being said also there are different unlockable skills and abilities for the characters they basically act as perks in order to get to these you have to unlock a specific specific amount of XP for the characters. The short explanation is there's a prestige system for the characters that allows you to increase the cap of the XP that you can unlock for that character each time. So say you max out the character level 10 times, you're at, you're at level 10 prestige for that character. At that point, your cap for the amount of XP that you have is higher and you spend the XP on the perks each time resetting when you prestige so going into that and doing that will allow you to have access to better rigs better equipment buffs for the specific equipment that that character is good at at least for the current state of things 
And like any early access game, nothing is final, so whatever ends up changing over time will probably be for the better anyway. At least for the old man, which was the character we had access to in the beta, the buffs weren't super great. So realistically, there probably will be skill changes on top of the fact that some of the characters won't be super specifically defined at launch. Again, they talked a little bit about this in the last video. They went over the different equipment that you can bring in, such as IEDs and explosives, so that you can set traps for the enemies or have different ways of playing instead of just sneaking past or shooting whoever you can or whenever you need to. So that's good. They added some context there. Again, they did want to make sure that the players knew that playing solo is feasible and sometimes it's actually preferable. Again, stealth is easier when you're a single person. They added that even if you're playing solo offline, there is no pause. When you're in the game, the game is live. So take that into account. If you don't have 10 to 30 minutes to spare, don't start a raid. Or try to find a good hiding spot and hope that you don't perish. That's probably the only other explanation. They affirmed that carrying weight and capacity does slow your character down the more that you have. So there's going to be some risk rewards in terms of carrying the heaviest loot that you can in terms of, you know, increasing your survivability in case you need to get out of places faster. They also added that the different characters have different carrying weights. They said that the scab girl in particular was going to be super quick, but she'll be able to carry less stuff. So that's exciting. So it sounds like there isn't going to be VoIP for the early access, at least for the foreseeable future. There will be text chat. They do want to add proximity VoIP. It also sounds like they want to project that proximity VoIP to the enemies around you, similar to how aliens worked. That would be super interesting. They did say that style of comms is going to be the dream. However, they did affirm, although I guess we'll see if it's the case, that it'll be available before the end of the year. Now with the gameplay stuff out of the way, let's go over some lore stuff that they went over. Here's something funny, they responded on what's going on with the cows. Apparently it's a longer story and it's Apocalypse Now inspired. Also, there's more on that soon. Is it a real cow? They went over the faction rep system a little bit as well. Specifically for early access for the time being, it's going to be around locking or unlocking vendor inventories, locking or unlocking map entry points, increases or decreases to vendor sell and buyback pricing, increases or decreases to their response time to aggression or hostile activity on the maps, and they're also going to be adding more stuff in the future, and they teased the Merc system. And specifically for the beta testers, they responded to why hunter killers were spawning on top of players and seemingly at random. <laughs> Apparently it was a bug, and they're not supposed to do that. Basically the explanation is they were programmed to spawn at a site, and oftentimes that just meant right behind the player. Very odd. So they did say that they added a safe range, so that shouldn't happen nearly as frequently or ever, which is good. That's a good change. So after that, let's move on to some technical stuff. Definitely a major concern with the community has been the hefty PC requirements, and they did provide some clarification on that. Optimization for this is obviously super important, and it does sound like it's a major concern for them as well. With that being said, it also sounds like they have a lot of work to do on this front. They said 12 gigabytes of RAM and 8 gigabytes of video RAM is what it is that you'll likely need for the minimum, and it being cutting edge. Again, I don't work for Fun Dog Studios or have contact with them. I don't know the technical prowess that they have in terms of optimization, especially with this brand new software that exists. So, you know, it's gonna kind of be a crapshoot for right now. Importantly on that front, it does sound like they have contact with Nvidia specifically, who's provided them with a ton of graphics cards to do a bunch of testing on. So that's good in terms of optimization and trying to figure out where the optimizations lie, but they do have a lot of work to do still. They answered a little bit on what modding support will be available when early access launch, and it's basically dependent on the bandwidth that they have, apparently. They are super excited to see what the community comes up with, so let's hope that it's good. A little bit of cool stuff for people that like the minimalist look while they game. They did go over the possibility of playing the game without the HUD, or with the very least minimal HUD, and that is sort of ongoing, but they are working on it. On top of optimization stuff, they are currently lurking into DLSS and FSR. Again, NVIDIA has been super helpful on that front for them, so let's hope for the best. A little bit of good news for people that don't have Steam or don't like Steam, etc. It's going to be available in other stores than just Steam. Specifically, they said they're in talks with GOG now, and they will be available on Epic. They also clarified that you won't have to make an Epic account. 
or link your Steam to an Epic account. On the language localization front, they are doing their best. They don't have a dedicated team for that now. Essentially right now they're relying on the second language speakers that they have access to on the team. The languages that they have now are English, German, Spanish, French, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Polish, Portuguese, Russian, Ukrainian, and they also have Chinese, which is apparently simplified but working on expanding. For anybody who speaks those languages, they are asking that you directly let them know if the translation's a little messed up. Anyway, after that, let's go over some planned content. Probably some big news for people, they teased that we might have access to playable mechs, at least the small ones. They didn't give a lot of information on that, it was mostly just a wink. So they talked a little bit about the different map sizes, but that the raid time should be 10 to 30 minutes, probably dependent on the size of the map that you're on. They're probably going to add a prone at some point, it won't be available on early access. They're also talking about a dive feature, similar to Max Payne. I don't know if that'll actually make it into the game, at least in terms of that degree to it. There was a technically a dive that was available in the beta, but it wasn't super great or useful. In fact, it was set to such a weird button prompt that I was pretty sure that I was one of the few people that actually used it. I told people on the Discord about it and they were like, that doesn't make any sense. But it was available in the beta, so, you know, we'll see. Also some good news for art nerds, they're probably going to be adding a gallery to the game so that you can basically view the enemy and weapon models. They're discussing it internally to see if it'll work, but at the very least it sounds like they want that to be a thing. If it's not available in game, I would imagine similar to the art book that they're releasing. Again, see my previous Q&A video, but hopefully if it's not in game, it'll be a part of some art book that they release. They also went over some melee stuff whether or not there will be swords or like different machetes or knives and stuff there so there was melee in early access on top of some stealth kills that you can get but there weren't melee weapons does sound like they're looking to add them though which will be good somebody specifically asked what the devs will be focused on either creating new content or polishing up animations and the looks of the game after the early access or a mix of both and honestly this is kind of a no shit response they basically said both Playing the beta, obviously the game has a great skeleton and foundation to work on, but they can definitely improve on different animations and different aspects on top of the fact that there were only two maps. And I know that they're going to have more maps on early access launch, but the more content that this game will have in terms of brand new maps or enemies or weapons, etc., will benefit it. Finally, they teased that they might add cybernetics to the game, which I do find kind of funny because the old man, again, the character that you played in the beta, had a robot hand. So that technically is, at least in the character design, whether or not something like that will have upgradable buffs is not out of the question apparently, so stay tuned. I know that if you've been paying attention, you've probably been waiting on the water question, and they responded again. Specifically with the water death mechanic, I had to offer a retraction from my last video. What'll happen is that you don't lose experience, but your innards will reset and you'll lose all your gear. Realistically, in the beta, the more water you had, the more vendors you had access to. I think that'll be improved upon at some point, but that's effectively what it meant. When your character experiences water death when you run out of water, your innards dies. That's how it's supposed to play out. With that being said, that basically means that some other scav camp comes through and picks apart what it is that you had, and then you have to start back from square one, except your characters don't lose progress, so it's not a character wipe. You don't lose any character XP or prestige level, but you do lose any gear or equipment. They did add to the timer, so it'll be more than 30 days, and they're also adding more ways to reduce the speed at which it goes down on top of the stuff that they're adding to prevent water death entirely. So we'll see how that plays out. At the end of the day, I feel like this is a player autonomy issue more than anything. Whether or not it's intended, it feels like a punishment to players who aren't playing consistently enough to make sure that their character doesn't experience water death. There's been a lot of discussion and backlash against this system, and I don't necessarily disagree with it. A little bit of devil's advocate, I suppose, is if we're complaining realistically about not playing a game for 30 plus days and having to redo content that you have already done, I feel like players either are already not coming back to do that. Obviously people have lives and expecting people to play a game all the time or at the very least once a day, week, month, etc. Which they said they don't expect players to have to do to keep their innards from dying is kind of 
whatever. It's an early access game. However much content is available, I'm sure what'll end up happening is people will get through everything, experience what they have to experience, and then not touch it until a major content drop comes. Part of me feels like with that, people are really complaining about having to redo content that they have already done i.e. collecting water and getting all the guns back that they had before so that they can experience that new content faster or slower? It's hard. I mean, it's kind of hard. It, there's a lot of moving parts. Again, I don't necessarily disagree with the people that don't like this mechanic. It's It does seem punishing. It's a hardcore game. There's pros and cons to both, I'm sure. I know that the dev vision is for this to be in the game because it's important to them. And I can respect that. I'm sure things will change. I'm not 100% on what will. Regardless, the questions surrounding the water system will probably be ongoing throughout the entirety of the early access period or for however long the water system remains in place. Stay tuned. I know that Fun Dog Studios has the player's best interest at heart. I've said this specifically other places. I feel like they want to specifically try this out because they wouldn't have had an opportunity to do so if they were a part of a AAA development team. And they really just want to see how it operates in an early access environment with more players. And I get that. Like, I understand where that's coming from and it's super reasonable. And again, it's their game. They want to do a thing. Sometimes the players have to suck it up. Hopefully it doesn't push more people away than people will deal with it. I, I, I'm hoping for the best, obviously. I want Forever Winter to succeed. And I don't think that this is going to prevent it from doing that. So with all that being said, I appreciate you for being here. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't seen my previous video, again, I will link it in the description. They went over a couple similar questions that provided some context. So if you were curious, it'd be good to go through that a little bit. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to comment them below. I'll see what I can do to figure it out. If you haven't already and you want to support the channel, please subscribe. I would genuinely appreciate it. Finally, do me a favor. Please don't die. I will see you in the next one.